יופי, סאו בעזרת השם, we are in תורה ל"ח, פרט ה', we learned a little bit about the year, that it's the shame that a person have in his עבודת השם, that he wants to really um, fulfill his obligation to the king, to the creator. Like that it's written, יראת השם על פניכם, זו הבושה שהיא על הפנים, that you can see on the face of the person how shy he is and how humble he is and how much he feels um, that he's got a lot more to do. היינו בחינת תפילין על ידי בינה שהיא אימה על ברא. Like the aspect of תפילין, the תפילין we're receiving the תפילין by that um, מידה that calls בינה. The meaning of the word בינה is power of understanding. שאימא על ברא, that it's a mother on the sun. So we have two tefillin, you have one tefillin on your head and you have one tefillin on your arm. It's the second one. And also, ira u abusha, it's two separate things that are one. Bnei Israel, they have faith and also their mercy. They also wants to do their job but they're also humble <coughs> to wait until the last moment until the moment that they for sure going to be called to do their job so and the ima al bera it's that one is protecting the other the mother she's protecting her son so the wisdom that a person <coughs> have is helping him to watch out from troubles The humility that you have is bringing you to the place that you're going to be prepared and ready, that when you're going to be called to serve and to do your job, you're going to have the vessels. I have a student, a wonderful student, that for a long time I told him that I want him to record classes and to upload them to our website. And for a long time he wasn't doing it. He didn't feel like he is ready. And after a few years of conversations on that topic, suddenly started and you see amazing results. Because he was working on himself and he was preparing himself to that moment that he's going to do that. He wanted from the beginning to do it, but he didn't feel like he is ready. And now when he came to that understanding that really he can do it and now that he done it so mamash we can see amazing results and we can see that really there's already fruits to those wonderful classes wonderful videos so from one side you need to go and you need to do but you also need to be aware to yourself and to hold yourself back until you're going to be ready The only way to prepare ourselves is through the prayers and through the will that they are building those vessels to contain the light. Um, yes, like dough, like clay, you need to work with it that it's going to become to have a certain shape that you're going to be able, like cement, you need to from Larbev, stir, mix it until it comes to, to a certain consistency. Wow. Yosef. Yosef is one of those unique men that are able to do five things in, in one time. Men are not able to do that. Once I spoke to my wife and I started to tell her something and she was doing something so I stopped and she's telling me why are you stopping? I told her, I wait you're going to finish, I want you to focus. And not, she said, I'm a woman. <laughs> Women are able to do a few things in, in the same time. But you can talk, I'm listening. And all of the kitchen on fire and she's, everything is good. So Yosef is one of those men that are uh, unique, that have those abilities that are beyond our reach. Okay, so I really always want to tell you things from my heart, but um, 
but there is a Rabbi Nachman here that he wrote a long book. We need to respect him. So, וזה שאמרו חכמינו זיכרונם לברכה, and this is why רבותינו told us, גמרא מסכת ברכות, תפילין נקראין פאר, ותפילין, they also called glory, the glory of עם ישראל, the פאר, that's the beauty, שנאמר פאירך חבוש עליך, your glory is, um, is, is uh, wrapping your cloak on you. On your, on your head and on your arm. Upeer and the glory, it's Kraliut Agvanin, contains all of the colors. This is why the color of the tefillin also is black, because black contains all of the colors inside of it. Kate Parut al Kraliut Agvanin, because the glory is by all of the colors. You cannot say, I'm strong. Okay, you're strong, but you're also stupid. So, you cannot praise yourself in your power that you're so strong. It's a very stupid thing to do if you're dumb. Okay, you say, I know how to paint. Yeah, but you're divorced and your children are using drugs. So who cares how talented you are? Okay, so if you don't have all of, of the colors of the rainbow, if you don't contain all of the things, you're also talented and you're so wise and you also you have Torah Vederech Eretz you have both of the things you're also very wise and you have Torah but you also know how to behave you go a person goes Has Shalom Lo to a hospital and he's gonna meet the biggest professor of them all and everyone are waiting there is a tour people list of people are waiting three months five months to meet that professor you go to that meeting Has Shalom you hear him screaming on the phone and, and I don't know, cursing his secretary, closing the, the phone. Oh, hello, yes, how can I help you? Or that even to you he will not going to be nice. And so, what's that? What, what? It's nothing. Every person that his wisdom is larger than his actions means that he doesn't use his wisdom like he's supposed to, like he's able to. Also, his wisdom doesn't count nothing. It's like that he's stupid. Okay, so you're a genius. So who cares? And all day long, and the PlayStation. You're the best player in your PlayStation. You're a genius in your PlayStation. All day, you, you're winning in all of the races. You're killing all of the, the Nazi soldiers. You're the best pilot in the world. You're locked in your room in front of your plasma screen and, screen and it doesn't, you're not a pilot, you're not killing Nazis, you're not winning in no race, it's just your imaginations. A person really needs to take out from what that he's got. That is the duality that a person has a body and a soul. He's got a will to achieve things and he needs to hold himself back. He's got Yirat Shamaim, he wants to serve, he wants to commit himself to Hashem Barach, but he needs to have that shame to hold himself back, to ask, who am I to do? Do I really need to do? Is it really the will of Hashem Barach from us? Rabbeinu is calling that also, Baki Beratso, Baki Bashov. You need to know how to climb, how to achieve, and you need also to learn and to know how to go back, how to, how to fall how to relax, how to breathe, how to, how to sleep. You need to learn all of those things. So when Rabbeinu is explaining how we should go back, he's saying to us that we need to know that it's all for Hashem. Okay, great, it's a wonderful advice. You need to understand that whatever you achieve is coming from Hashem and also your downs are from Hashem. So don't be in stress and in sadness when you're not learning enough, when you're, not, when you're down. Okay, great. What about how to climb, how to achieve? So Rabbeinu is saying over there, he doesn't say, you need to remember that all of your achievements are from Hashem. Over there he's saying, you need to know that you can always achieve more. It means that from the side of climbing, of growing, there is no end to the amount that you can get. You can always get higher. You can always achieve more. Always, always. Only when you go down, you need to know that it's okay. It means to go down, they don't tell you you can go even lower. 
because that's going to increase your sadness. But when you achieve things, they tell you, listen, you haven't achieved nothing yet. Because the main thing is the will. The main thing is the development. Really the inner part, the pnimiyut, the soul, the spiritual part in that duality from physicality and spirituality, that spiritual part, the developing part, he is the main one. He is the main one. The other one is required and you cannot live without it. You have to eat, you have to sleep, you have to rest, you have to go to clean yourself and you have to take care of your body and on and on. You have to have nice clothes and you have to have a watch and you have to have a table and you have to have your connection to physicality, to the material part of the creation. But it's not the main one. Not on that you need to put your focus, you need to put your eyes. Your eyes have to be face to, to heaven, to Hashem, to achieve more and more. That's the wisdom of righteous people. That righteous people, they are dreamers. They are people that always want to achieve things that haven't been achieved yet. Abraham Avinu revealed new things in the world. That's why he became to be chidush. That's why he, he is something. Rabbeinu said, who am, who am I? Mi ani? Ma shani mechadesh. The things that I'm bringing, that they are new. I am mechadesh. Renewing. The things that I'm renewing. The new things that I'm bringing. Oh, if I'm going to just be uh, in that pattern of, of righteous religious people going every day. To, so who am I? I'm not... Uh, Serial number. There's no, there's no difference between two books that both of them are the same as Sechta, between two bottles of, of Coke that, that, that actually contain the same liquid. They're very different, but... Do insights. Do insights. So there is no difference between those two bottles of water if both of them contain... They're very different. If you're going to check the atoms inside of them, the, the, the parts... Very different bottles. That's the truth. Well, but who cares about that difference? It's not something really to, to think about. But if suddenly those water have sugar in it, a certain flavor, a certain smell, so, okay, that's unique. Something that is new, something that is different. Every righteous man brought something new down to the world. So it means that he was a dreamer. He was someone that was yearning, someone that was hoping, someone that had his, his, his desire to bring down the light of Hashem in Barach in a higher way, in a more pleasant way, in a way that's going to be accepted more. So that's how people are inventing and bringing new things into the world, trying to make life easier for other people. All of those people, it calls Ma'abchanim, how you say Ma'abchanim? Revolutionaries. 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 Those people are changing the face of the world because they're dreaming, because they let themselves to be who that they are. And you can dream in your house, you can dream in, your, in the field, you can dream in your office. I have a friend that told me that yesterday for, for all of his one hour at Bodetut, he was he was dancing in his office. He's got a nice office. He locked the door. And he was dancing for an hour. You allow yourself to do that so you're going to be able to enjoy the results of being like that, free and happy for an hour with Hashem. But if you are not going to let yourself be who that you are, that you want to dance now for an hour, that you want to clap your hands now to Hashem for an hour, that you want to length your prayers and to pray for... If you're not going to let yourself do that because you have to function according to the rules of the place, of the Bet Knesset, the Minhag, or whatever, if you're not going to let yourself to be who that you are, you will never going to find who that you are. Only if you're going to let yourself be that, that sparrow, that, that, that bird that cannot live in, in no cage, only if you're going to dare... To be who that you are, you're going to be able to find who that you are. First steps from the darkness into the light are in the darkness. And you have to make them. 
You have to dare. You have to dare. You want to achieve something. You have to start your six hours in Bodhidut. The results are going to come after the six. Going to finish. But you have to start. And in the beginning, okay, five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Damn watch. <laughs> <laughs> you have to start like that. Broken, Broken watch. It have to start like that. You have to start walking from the darkness. That darkness is required. You have to go out from the darkness because if not, if you're born in the light and you're an illuminated person, and it's not your reward. You cannot enjoy it. Think about the satisfaction of a person that never kept Shabbos. Go to Yeshiva of Baal Shuva. You're going to see their joy, their happiness on their faces. You see them dancing for hours, singing the Hallel for hours. You, you never saw that in no shul. You never saw that in no... You cannot see that in no mm. shtib lach. Why? Because those guys are FFB or FFH and that's it. So they're stuck. They don't know how to be happy. They never felt no happiness. So they're just, okay, it's nice. It's, I don't know, or that it's okay, or that it's, that's who we are. Where is Hashem? Where is that excitement? Where is that happiness, that joy? Thank you, Hashem, for what, the, for what that you gave me. Thank you, Hashem, for that amazing Shabbos. It's a regular Shabbos, like last Shabbos, like next Shabbos. But if you remember when you close your eyes and suddenly you look at the old Shabbos that you had five years ago, seven years ago, that you were destroying the world in those Shabbos, or you just woke up still drunk from yesterday night and you didn't feel no light in that Shabbos, and now suddenly... You're celebrating and you're happy and you're eating and drinking and you meet your friends in the Bet Knesset and you do one hour at Bodhidut and you... So mm -hmm. then everything becomes to be so colorful and so bright and so nice and... Because you can compare it to the time that you were in darkness. Samechenu kimot initanu. If you don't remember the sorrow of the suffering of the exile, you cannot be happy. If you're not mourning on the destruction, you will never going to be able to enjoy the, re the rebuilding of it, of Bet HaMikdash, of Jerusalem, of your Yirat Shamaim. Okay, your Yere Shamaim, your from from birth. You're, you're not Yere Shamaim, you're religious. You're religious. You, you have nice habits, nice minhagim. You wake up early, your father will wake, was waking you up every morning, so you used to wake up every morning. It's not hard for you. You go to shul, you used to pray, you know exactly where to open the siddur. You're just doing it. It's not really you. It's your body functioning, <clears throat> corresponding to the education that you received in your house. That's it. It's not you. You cannot find yourself like that. Really, to find yourself, you need to be a, a rebel, a mored. You have to be a rebel. You have to run away to look for Hashem Barach. Even Rabbi Nachman in Breslev, that he was learning from the best rabbis, and he had amazing parents, and he was growing in the house of his grandfather, the Baal Shem Tov. He was running away to the fields. And he was hiding himself in the attic, and he was screaming at night under the blanket that no one going to hear him. And he would lock himself in the basement that no one going to see him. And he was crying to Hashem, and he was hiding from people. Because if you're not doing something with yourself, you're just very honorable with your suit and tie and black cow cowboy boots. You're never going to reach nothing. You're never going to achieve nothing. You have to look for Hashem. You need to have Mesirut Nefesh, like Moshe Rabbeinu. He's ready to fight. He's ready to kill. Moshe Rabbeinu. He killed a person. Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu. He killed a man. Yes. And Avraham Avinu to rescue his 
his his uh, lot to Giso nephew brother-in-law his brother-in-law for that he was ready no fix me Ben Achiv, I call him his nephew. He's Achian. He doesn't change the story. <laughs> doesn't matter. This was the same wall, and he dropped his peace and quiet, and he went to fight, and he took his students with him, and they didn't have no weapon, and they took sand. And they were throwing sand, and the sand become to be uh, arrows and 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 stones that and spears that that was flying it, because I'm still with nefesh. A person doesn't have no weapon all day long. Think about the 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 makabim. They were preparing themselves to the wall against the Greeks in three days of fast of fast. They were not eating for three days. Which warrior, which soldier in the world going to prepare himself like that? They were not soldiers. They were Avrechim, sitting all day long in Bet HaMikdash and learning Torah in Bet HaMikdash and Bet HaMidrash. That's who they were. And then there was a horrible decree and they saw destruction running into their faces. So they said, all right, we need to fight. So we're declaring a three days fast, <laughs> poor Avrechim, thin and skinny, not able to stand for longer than one hour and a half in the sun. And now they're fasting for three days, preparing themselves to the wall. And then when you see the, the, the description, the esber, on, in the Midrashim on how they were fighting, so you can understand how so few people were winning. Because they just they were dragging the swords on the ground, they couldn't lift the swords and then when the, the thousands of soldiers came in front of them so they barely lift their swords and the sword by themselves just were flying in the air and, and, and taking heads off of thousands of people. They were not soldiers, they were not warriors. They were just crying to Hashem and they were fasting. And then, Can we win a certain war with our weapon, with our wisdom, with our... Mm. Only with our prayers. En kochenu ela bape. Only in our mouth, only in the prayers. You want to achieve things, you need to be ready to sacrifice. To sacrifice, it means from your satisfactions, from your pleasures. From watching another movie, from watching the news again, from eating another sandwich, from drinking another cola, another Pepsi, another diet Arak. <laughs> Need to wake up. Need to wake up to push yourself out of the house, to push yourself out of bed, to push yourself from the computer, to push yourself from your refrigerator and from your wife, to push yourself out to push yourself to stand in front of Hashem. So now you went to the field and it's hard for you. You feel that your mouth is blocked, is sealed, you cannot talk. Wait. Don't go back to the kitchen. Don't go back to bed. Wait. Wait. You do want to talk to Hashem, so you're going to wait. If you know that after two, three, four, five hours you're going to receive a million dollars, you're going to stand six days for that one million dollars. In six days, you have a million dollars, okay? Who are going to go? No bathroom, no food. Now everyone are standing. For bread, people are waiting for days, right? When they're hungry. So if you have an opportunity really to succeed in life, to achieve, why are you not waiting for Hashem? Because you don't really care. You don't really wait for Hashem. You want your salvations, you want your, your satisfactions, your pleasures. You need to understand that your solution and your happiness depends in your closeness to Hashem, to the Creator. Because kirvat elokim li tov. That you're going to have good in your life, it depends in how much you're close to Hashem. Karov Hashem to who? Close Hashem is to who? Lechol asher ikreu, to everyone that's going to call him. Lechol asher ikreu, to everyone that's going to call him with truth. 
So on the truth you need to work and to call him that's actually the act that you need to to do and in that depends how much you're going to be close to Hashem and how much you're going to feel good as a result and it's okay to want to feel good it's great that's the will of the Creator He Himself wants you to feel good He Himself wants you to be happy He Himself wants you to succeed to grow to develop to purify yourself to, to do to achieve everything that you want the only reason that we don't have the salvation now in our hands just like that open and clear for everyone it's only because that we ourselves don't believe in ourselves if we would believe in ourselves we would go and do that why Abraham Avinu could throw sand and that sands become to be uh, spears and arrows why? because he knew that Hashem was with him why David the Melech could be escaped from every trouble? Because he knew that Hashem was with him. Why Yahshua Binun with Shofarot is blowing the Shofar and walls are falling and miracles are happening? Because he knew Hashem was with him. Why Moshe Rabbeinu can stand in front of the sea and he's calm and he's relaxed and he's in no stress and he doesn't check what they're saying in the news that's going to happen. He knows that Hashem is with him. And no matter what's going to happen, it's going to be good. Because Hashem is with you. And when you believe in yourself, in yourself kindness is going to surround you. You're going to see miracles in every footstep. In every footstep. You can walk on air. You can walk on water. You can fly. You can get into the fire, into the fog, into the clouds, into thunders, into rain. You don't feel no cold, you don't feel no sorrow, no suffering. You just focus in the purpose of your being and then you're not hungry anymore. Moshe Rabbeinu was climbing to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights and he's not hungry. He's not sitting over there, oh, another 39 days, wow, another 38 like those, wow. 20 days more, what I'm gonna do here for another 20 days? I took on myself six hours in Bodhidut, only two hours. Wow, I have another four, what I'm gonna do? It went up to 40 days. He went up to cancel the decree. It took him 40 days. But if it would take him 500 days, he would stay there 500 days. He had a purpose and nothing else was in his mind not his stomach and not his back and not his eyes and not his legs and not a meeting that he's supposed to meet someone and not his phone calls and texts and whatsapp and emails that he was he had a purpose what was the purpose? to bring down salvation and forgiveness to Ham Israel and that's was in the top of his priorities and he wasn't thinking about nothing else. And if Moshe Rabbeinu was in the generation of the Holocaust, he would cancel the Holocaust. The decree on the days of Mount Sinai wasn't better and easier to cancel than the decree in the Holocaust. Over there it was destruction of all of that nation. And also there it was a destruction on all of the nation. It was Gzerat Klaya, death. That's it, for everyone. That was the decree. Moshe Rabbeinu went and fight. So you think that we should cry that we don't have Moshe? No. In the place that Moshe is not there, you need to be Moshe. You need to be Moshe. Oh, Moshe is not here, so what are you going to do? You're going to wait to the next Moshe to come? He's not coming. It's not a bus. It's not a light train. Moshe is a righteous man. Who's that righteous man going to be? Like I asked you once, who going to be Nachshon ben Aminadav? Who going to be Nachshon ben Aminadav? I told you that story, that my children were in Cheder, in school, and they bought those cars the children are driving them the, uh, how you call that no no like bimba 
Bimba? No, no I'm going to understand. Bimba. What? Scooters. So the Rebbe, he brought one of those scooters. Trikes. What? Tri trikes. trikes. Mm -hmm. It's a new word, but I understand. And he's asking the children, no one dared to touch it. It's a new one, so everyone is afraid to touch it. So he's asking the children, who wants to be Nachshon ben Amin Adav? And everyone's saying, Ani, 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 me, 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 me. So he asked again, Who wants to be Nachshon ben Amin Adav? And everyone's saying, Me, 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 me. And he's laughing. They don't really want to be Nachshon. Nachshon ben Amin Adav, he's jumping on that trike. trike and he's driving away from there. That's what he's doing. Nachshon ben Amin Adav, he takes the wheel into his hands and he's driving away. That's Nachshon ben Amin Adav. Who wants to be Nachshon? Who wants to be Moshe Rabbeinu? Ani, 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 Ani. So be. So be Moshe Rabbeinu. What's the problem? Go pray for 40 days and 40 nights. Let's see you. You think you're going to die out of hunger? You think you're going to... What's going to happen to you? Go to pray on Am Israel. What's going to happen to you? Someone really told you not to eat. You think you need not to eat. You think you need to, not to sleep. Sleep, eat, be happy, be relaxed, and do as much as you can. Nothing gonna happen to you. No, how I'm gonna do six? It's a yetzer ara, drilling your mind, messing up with your brain. No, look, what you gonna say? What people gonna think? What she gonna say? What he gonna say? What they gonna say? Wow, what they gonna say? Who cares? Who are they? They're not exist. And even if they are, you have the salvation of Am Yisrael on your shoulders. So who cares what they're going to think? Who cares what they're going to have to say? If you're going to say, Chas Shalom, judgments are waking up on you because that you've done six hours in Bodedut and yet Sarah is not so happy with you. So do tshuva. What's the problem? How are canceling decrees? We're doing tshuva. So now you ask yourself, what I'm going to do? I need to do six hours in Bodedut. I'm afraid that it's going to bother my wife that I'm doing six hours in Bodedut. Great, wonderful. So go to your wife, apologize, pray on it before. Tell her, listen, I'm sorry, I love you, I'm a mash, I'm really, I need to, I have to, I'm sorry, I'm apologizing, please, please, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm burning myself in six hours in Bodedut. And that's it. Now you see she's angry? Please, Hashem. Help her not to be angry. Let her please be relaxed. Let her be happy. Please Hashem, that I'm not going to make her angry. Please Hashem, let me make her happy. Please Hashem, I don't know how to make her happy. Please, you make her happy. Move on in your life. You think prayer is going to bring down bounty and shefa and success to all of Am Israel, but you cannot bring the same shefa into your house with your prayers? Do one hour from those six hours of it, but do it on your wife that you're going to be happy. And be ready that she will not going to be happy and try to apologize and to please her after those six hours it would do. But do those six hours it would do. Now you need to bring money for rent, okay? And she going to be angry if you're going to leave the house. Okay, so you're not going to go to work. You're going every day and she's not happy. What can you do? You pray and you try to please her. So you bring her a little candy and you make some phone calls during the day and you ask her, how are you? What's going on? And you buy flowers on Friday. And you try to do the best that you can. But you're going you're gonna to drop off on Nassai. You're not going to pay the rent because she's angry. She's going to be happy if you're not going to pay the rent. It's going to make her happier. So you need to do your six hours in Bodedut, you need to do your tshuva, you need to go to Beit Midrash, and you also need to remember your wife and to try to please her and to make her happy. And Rabba, so do two mitzvot. So you have more things. Moshe Rabbeinu was just uh, over there. You can do th two things in the same time. You like that? Uh, like that? You have the ability of the women that they can do two things in the same time. You don't need to be Moshe Rabbeinu, you can handle only one thing. He could go up and 40 days. He cannot eat and drink and learn and also put on Am Yisrael. He doesn't have that ability, he was a man. He could only do one thing, he can go and pray for 40 days. That he can focus on doing one thing, he could do that. But you're stronger than him. You can do two things in one time. You can also do six hours in Bodedut and also to WhatsApp your wife, I love you, I'm sorry, soon I'm finishing, in four and a half hours I'm coming, don't worry. <laughs> Everything gonna be okay.
If you really want to achieve things, you can achieve them. It all depends on your will. They're going to help you to succeed and to achieve your goals if you're going to want them, if you're really going to want to achieve them. And on that, Rabbi Elmer said, any Yehush Ba'olam Klal, there's no despair in the world at all. It's not exist. It's not exist. means that if you're going to keep your hope on, and if you're going to keep on yearning and praying to Hashem Yitbarach, you're going to achieve all of your goals. And you need to aim high. Don't pray on small things. Hashem, we need our parnasah, 3,000 a month, 5,000 a month. No, don't pray like that. Say, Hashem, bring bounty to all of Am Yisrael. That wealth is going to be our share. That we're all going to be rich. That every Jew is going to have a BMW, a Mercedes, a Lamborghini, a Porsche. That everyone is going to be rich. You have headache? No, Hashem, please, that I'm going to feel better. No, Hashem, that all of us are going to be healthy and strong and heroes. That no women are going to suffer, no children are going to suffer. Take out all of the sick people from hospital. That everyone is going to be strong and powerful and healthy. And You need a house, you need whatever, Hashem, build Beit HaMikdash. Build, you want salvation in your house, pray on Beit HaMikdash. It's not a lie. The reason that you don't have a house is as a result of the fact that there's no Beit Mikdash. That's why you need to pray on Beit Mikdash if you don't have a house. Hashem tried to wake you up that He doesn't have a house. That's why you don't have a house. That's why you need to do tshuva on the fact that you yourself don't care enough from the Beit Mikdash of Hashem Barach. The Palestinians, they're walking over there and claiming that we're not supposed to walk over. What? It's a democracy. What? Well, Eretz Israel, it's the, the most, how is it, the Achid, the, the, the Achid the, the democratic. The most democratic land in the world, supposed to be. The rules are against us, against the Jews, in Eretz Israel, in our land, and now we're not allowed to go to. to, to to our abide? That's, that's democracy. It's stupidity. It's not democracy. Let everyone that wants to go to the place of Beit HaMikdash to be able to go. No, Palestinians. What, are we stopping Palestinians from going to the Kotel HaMaravi? Is there a guard in the entrance to Kotel HaMaravi? That's the Jewish part, right? The Kotel HaMaravi, Western Wall. Is there any guard over there to stop from from um, Ishmaelim, from Palestinians, to go to the Western Wall, if they want. They are going. You can see them going. Christians people are not allowed. Never. Even in the days of Beit HaMikdash, <laughs> people that were allowed to enter, they, they were entering the also certain places that you're not allowed in the days of Beit HaMikdash because of purity. No one even asked to go to those places. There was no demanding, no one even wanted. People were respecting. We need to go and to cry to Hashem Yitbarach, please, Rabbi Shalom. Make it uh, democratic. We're going to pray for democracy. Yeah, why not? All of the tools are good. I saw once Chacham Avraham Chai, he's one of the hidden righteous people in Eretz Israel. He's a very, very humble, very special person. I saw him in, uh, I think it was a, there was a, it, it was a Sudat Mitzvah, into a certain uh, event. And, uh, and he, was, he washed his hand and he said to eat, and he was eating with his knife. Like that, <laughs> he was taking food with his knife. <laughs> every tool, every vessel, every tool, every everything is good. You can use everything. You can use democracy. You can use whatever it takes. No, we want the state, Medinat Alacha, Shtuyot. We don't want it. <coughs> I don't want it to be Medinat Alacha. When we're going to have rabbis that knows how to keep Alacha, then we want to have Medinat Alacha. Today to have Medinat Alakha, today with the rabbis that we have today to have Medinat Alakha, it's a destruction. We'd rather to have a democracy. It's better. Medinat Alakha with the rabbis that we have, whew, worst.
worst. <laughs> We'd rather to have democracy. <laughs> Thank you. Chazak <laughs> u